Well, hey guys, my name is Estefania Sandoval. I'm 23 years old, and as Alcarlo Carlos said, I come from Quito, Ecuador. Well, my specific topic is that how many people did know that Ecuador has as their common currency the dollar, like the US dollar? Beyond the ones that I have already <laughs> talked about. Yeah, well, Ecuador is one of the few countries that has actually incorporated as their current currency the dollar. But actually, that's the only measure that has saved us from becoming Venezuela 2.0. Because, of course, the Ecuadorian government was not able to print dollars because that's not from us. But in the year 2000, actually, this seems like a, the worst decision that every government can probably have ever made. Because, you know, the inflation was so high that we had before this local currency called Sucre. And 10 sucres won one dollar, but we're now 25,000 sucres is one dollar. Can you imagine the kind of inflation that we have been going through if we haven't incorporated the dollars as a local currency in the year 2000? Well, the thing is that actually that was the reason why the government was not able to start this clientelism that the Dr. Kylie was just talking about. Because you know, every, Every plan, every hospital, every school come from our taxes, of course, they have been paid. But what if they wanted to gain more clients or to show that this kind of government, this paternalist kind of government was willing to offer more? The only thing that was not able is that because we didn't have this chance to produce our currency and to pay for more educational systems or like public hospitals, was the dollar actually. And not, not only that, that the dollar has been the one that has sustained our economy. Because as you have known, more of the trades all over the world has been going into the dollar currency. Well, right now the EU is always like trying to get some space into, into the trades. But however, the dollar keeps being the stronger currency all over the world. This is important in two aspects. And actually, I want to tell you that money is an institution, right? And we all of us, well, at least all of Latin American countries, or most of them, we don't believe in institutions. That's the reason Ecuador has been through 20 constitutions. You have been only one, and it has been amendment 20, 25 times, approximately. But Ecuadorians, they just believe that every president comes from his new ideas, and none of the work done before was worth it. So they just erase everything and start from a new perspective, focal view, and local policies. That's the reason we actually do not believe in institutions as Latin Americans. And that's the main reason why, why we, as Latin Americans, not only as Ecuadorians, tend to fall for these populist and charismatic leaders. As they have been kindly mentioned, Hugo Chavez. Ecuador also had Rafael Correa. And believe me, I was friend of Rafael Correa's daughter. And she hosted a very good party in the, in the, yeah, in the, well, our White House. Yeah, actually, and guess who paid for that, for that party? Of course, our taxes, right? Well, the thing is that that's one of the main reasons why Ecuador, but not only Ecuador, we have been falling and making not like uh, important choices. We just fall for the speech because they are charismatic. And, well, the limited governments actually try to touch your soul. Uh, to conclude, and actually, uh, to remain that our local currency is like the best thing that can happen to Ecuador. As you know, coins are heavy, right? So we cannot import that much coins. I brought some coins and I'm going to pass through this uh, table and to keep passing, which is our little kind of inflation that we have been trying to make. Because, uh, of, of course, coins are heavy, so we try not to import coins. So we manage to do our own kind of coins to keep like moving in into into the local market currency. Uh, well, thanks so much. Hi, I'm Carlos Alfaro from Arizona Talks, and if you like conversations like these, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and on our website at arizonatalks.org.